I think it's, uh, it's just that uh, one of the few things that happened with the Assets Bank Report was a major paradigm shift in the Nigerian banking industry. Not only was it a paradigm shift, it basically affirmed what the Fitch rating was saying. But I would rather take away uh, the Fitch rating at this time and say you need to understand whatever results you see now within the context of the operating environment in the last one year in which the results are presented. Personally, from our standpoint of view, we found the report uh, uh, that at the end of the day, you would be looking at June 16, 2009, as the day banking in Nigeria moved one step higher. How have you been? It was simple. For us, it represented a huge paradigm shift along uh, about six or seven areas. I took my time to look at it while coming in. And I found that for the first time, a new buzzword has been introduced, which is basically prudent risk management becomes the key word. One of the few things in the CEO statement, again, which was another landmark CEO statement. We just want to talk about what uh, I work with it. I've talked about that. We put it on the two risk. Just a moment ago, they talked about deal risk, deal leveraging, system, systemic risk, and what have you. For me, the most significant aspect of that speech was one, two things he said. One, he said that they were going to alter aggressive balance sheet growth approach, which they had been using before, and focus and, uh, focus and embrace the development of quality and sustainable earnings which is basically the key on the opinion of what we said. Look at this against the background. What are the issues and key concerns in the banking industry? One, disclosures in financial uh, uh, system, uh, banking supervision issue, uh, reliability of uh, the whole process and enforcement. Three, the lack of confidence in the financial system in general, the need for a stress test of the Nigerian banking sector. The uh, fifth one, from our standpoint of view, the unaddressed issue of deposit liability in terms of protection of investors. Now what this report signified for us, beyond the finances, which were impressive, beyond anything, is that if these results were achieved against the backdrop of huge investments by moving over to eight countries, including the UK, starting operations, uh, 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 non, uh, the, the non-utilization of CDS only branch for them to suspend margin loans uh, in terms of potential guidance because they actually applied it. I said, we were going there. Secondly, they did not even approach the expanded discount window throughout the period, which meant that they had already performed the stress test in their own organization and said, we have achieved all this by absorbing everything in and not taking the easy way out. Now, then let's look at one of the ways that the bank has just talked about. 2007 and it's all about confidence trap, it's all about risk management, exposure to the uh, stock market or equity investing and all that. This statement from, uh, from uh, um, um, uh, Ike Mokwede, uh, the CEO of uh, Access Bank, talked about uh, how the banks were able to get out of nervous investors, stricter regulators, and wary analysts of 2007-2008 to a new era where right now we can see disclosures from the banks and say, hey, we've been able to deleverage assets from the market. For example, uh, Access Bank said, we, we, we stop underwriting and being receiving bank to public offers and what have you. How does that hit you? It was assumed I was reading out of the NCM report issued by Prussia. Because <laughs> I did not know that he was a bank CEO actually giving a report out. Because uh, the report sounded like an analyst looking at the market from an outside point of view. For me, that was what was significant about the CEO statement. It was a market reality statement. I, I, I quote from what he said. Uh, the issue of this problem in the market came up when um, the developmental stage of maturity and sophistication uh, arising from the combination of poor disclosure on the part of industry, which includes himself, uh, operators, and uncoordinated action on the part of policymakers triggered this action. Now, this bank, therefore, has created what I would use and call the assets bank standard in corporate governance by admitting that they needed to raise their game and actually doing something about Don't forget that this bank is also saying in this report. They intend to follow through with the Basu, uh, uh, Basu two 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 so that by 2011, you will be seeing is that. Now, this, if it has not even given a profitable performance, which it did, you should commend the bank for saying that I have done everything to make sure that this bank is on solid foundation. Mm -hmm. One of the pillars, or two of the pillars of uh, Basel II, the first pillar talk about capital adequacy. This is a bank that grew its shareholders' funds by 7% to triple digits. Well, for the year ended March, but and, 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 and the second pillar is also about disclosure and, and, and self Well, that's a tricky area you're going to. In terms of capital adequacy, yes, that is it. But in terms of where you have declining quality of assets, 
you begin to worry about it. What it has done, and that's why I'm particular, it has only disclosed as much of the magic of the cell within you, it didn't disclose the body. Again, verse 2, in terms of uh, uh, transparency, tells you that there is a concept of maturity also in this particular provision. So maybe it has some part of maturity test, which is also a signal to tell us that uh, the magic of uh, is not so huge, and that's why it's easy for it to absorb it all in there. But the most significant thing from a market standpoint is that therefore they now set the standard. Ten weeks after the, the year end, we find the financial reporting. Now, it's not that you work right now, even for Access Bank. Why? One, you will recall that they did a public offer in 2007 and 14 point, now zero problem. If you took a look at all the banks that did public offers in the year 2010 now, the most significant thing I found was that it increased itself back to the top position in terms of the losses. The, the, the first two, uh, who are doing very well, happen to be uh, Intercontinental and First Bank, which is about uh, 7.26 removed from the offer price, and Air Force Bank 28% removed from the offer price. Other banks, like Zenit, uh, uh, UBA, Afribank, and First Inland, are an average of about 16% far removed from the offer price, which means that he's trying to get there. And my, my concern is, that, my, my interest rather, is that if you pass all these things, Follow the prudential guidelines, really. Improve, uh, improve your disclosure requirements. Well, As an investor, what will you look at right now when you say, is access by at the marketplace? As an analyst, I do not give advice on television, but if I look at what I've seen here, the fundamentals are in place. The fundamentals have never been in doubt, but they are now being strengthened. We tell you fully well that the only way forward they go, don't forget what I said, they complied with prudential guidance. They took all their provisions. They did not go to the expanded discount window to, to such a point. That means they are trying to tell you that, look, look at what the institutional banking results was all over. Is that despite all these economies, they were able to play there and go profit by as much as revenue by much as 40%, uh, interest come by much as 20%. They are telling us that, look, if banks are going to survive now, you will need to look more inwards to yourself and strengthen yourself and make yourself much more closely associated with your customers. Now, investors, uh, uh, stockbrokers, and fund managers will now have to learn new ways. It won't happen overnight. Don't forget, when they came out with the results, there was no shift. In fact, the market still that gets to the new product, exactly. the new product. And I think one of the responsibilities yourself or perhaps our own field is to begin to therefore analyze the major ramifications of this and help the whole market understand that this will represent the minimum standard. By the time the whole market comes up to this standard, it becomes a, 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 a common denominator. And then we can then push, push forward for a higher standard. And then you are also helping regulators. By you coming forward and saying, well, job, we know we have to be more close. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so, so you have to push a regulation to have those jobs in India. Exactly. Thank you very much, Femi. Let's do it there. Femi, uh, the CEO and head of uh, analysts at uh, uh, Prochia Nigeria, an online investor information. Uh, organization operating out of Lagos. So thank you very much for watching. That's about all we've got time for. We'll see you tomorrow, Friday, for a fresh edition of the program. This is your business morning, Thursday.